Hello friends, big fan of breathing, eating, and just generally being alive here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be talking about four extremely annoying heroes that actually aren't that good, and exactly how to counter these pub-owning heroes in your pubs very easily. So without further ado, let's get into it. The very first annoying but quite easy to deal with hero that we're going to be talking about is Sniper. I gotta admit, I was really shocked to find out that this hero has the highest win rate in 2 to 3k bracket, and not only that, it's being picked in most games. It's like the third highest pick rate as well, so apparently Sniper is completely ravaging pubs at about 2 to 3k, uh, even though in the Immortal bracket, Sniper is below a 50% win rate, and I want to show you exactly why this is the case. So the number one way to deal with Sniper, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's first look at this replay. This is about a Legend 2 sort of rated pub, and uh, we're going to look at how not to deal with the Sniper. So here we have Sniper, Ogre, some friends, sieging the top tower. Uh, Sniper is clearly visible if you are on this dire team. You see him over here just a little bit off camera from looking at the tower. He's peeping away, right? This guy has revealed his position. Uh, he's clearly the most important hero in the game. We can go ahead and look at the... Uh, let's go ahead and look at the damage done. Uh, oh, look at that. Sniper did 35,000 damage done. And the next guy in, in owning Necrophos only did 19,000 damage. So very important to kill this guy. He's basically a tactical nuke. Uh, you have to go on him. And yet look at what this axe does. This is the number one reason why Sniper completely dumpsters this bracket. So we have two beefy frontliners standing here in the front. And instead of going for the Sniper, the back line, axe decides, okay, I'm going to jump the Ogre. The Ogre of all heroes! He wants to get jumped! Ogre doesn't do anything but get jumped! Like, this is his dream that people go on him because then finally, for God's sakes, I can be useful! The shocking thing about this game is that this entire game was lost because the Dyer didn't go on Sniper, ever. And yet, they have four heroes that are great at jumping heroes in the back. They have a PL who has Doppelganger and who has Phantom Rush. They have an Ember Spirit who can Remnant in. They have an Earth Spirit who can Rolling Boulder in. And they have an Axe who can jump in with Blink Dagger. The only hero that can't jump the backline sniper is a damn Crystal Maiden. So they have all the tools to deal with the sniper, and yet they're letting him win. And not only that, but this guy has the audacity to all chat. He's flaming people. Do not let these sniper players get away with this in your pubs. The next thing that I want to take a look at is an 8k MMR pub, European pub. Anyway, we have Batrider going in first. Sniper is playing the back line as he should. Uh, Batrider manages to pick up the Jakiro with his lasso. Sniper runs in, gives him a couple of peeps. And watch Lifestealer and Tiny. Immediately they run past the Shadow Shaman and the Batrider. And then they go for the Sniper. The next hero that I want to talk about is... Ricky. This is one of the absolute most complained about heroes in my personal experience when it comes to uh, coaching Dota and making Dota YouTube videos and so forth. People hate playing against Ricky. So here is exactly how you deal with him and prevent him from basically just snowballing and killing your idiot teammates and yada yada. So one of this hero's biggest limitations is the fact that he simultaneously needs farm but he's really terrible at jungling. Now, why is that the case? Because his backstab only works if he's behind things. So jungling, you can't be behind things and therefore you farm incredibly slowly in the jungle. So what do you know? You know Ricky is going to be in lanes all the time and exactly this is what you need to do. You need to plant sentry wards in lanes and you need to smoke to side lanes or to sit in side lanes if you want to kill a Ricky. The problem is, People treat this hero like any other carry, like he can jungle, but he can't. You know exactly where this hero is going to go. Another thing that you can do that will really hinder a Ricky's gameplay and get you a lot of kills on him is to set up wards and sentries at the entrance to your jungles. And it's very important that you don't just have sentries, you have wards. And the reason for this is because if Ricky walks through a ward in a sentry, you don't need to have anybody there, you'll see him on it. 
if you just have a sentry, you need to actually have a hero there to scout the Ricky. So if you have wards and sentries at the entrance to jungles, as you can see in this game, once again, another another high-rated European pub, there's a ward and a sentry here, there's a ward and a sentry here. They absolutely know Ricky's location, even though they aren't necessarily going to kill him with these wards and sentries. For example, he walked through this ward and sentry, and this is exactly why Tusk is in this position in the first place. They knew Ricky was over here. And because of this, he walks downwards after he gets this outpost, uh, walks into another Warden Sentry combo, which allows Nature's Prophet to set up on him, which allows Tusk to uh, catch him here. Once again, that was set up by that Warden Sentry on this high ground here. And they kill Ricky and take the Aegis. They kill the Enigma, and then they kill Ricky. The next clip that I want to show you is from a competitive match between Team Unknown and Infamous where I think it it's pretty funny. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty big meme, but I think it also demonstrates something about this Bristleback hero that is pretty important for, you know, non-meme scenarios. So to start this, Rubik lifts this Bristleback who's absolutely popping off. He's got 15k net worth. He's huge onto the cliff. Because of this, Radiant is able to get a kill on the Legion Commander and the Dire they just run away. They want nothing to do with this. And lo and behold, this whole time, Bristleback has no TP. He's on the cliff. They check up there. He's still there. And see, in a moment like this, you would think there are five heroes surrounding a Bristle on a cliff who has 20 seconds with no TP. He is surely dead. Right? Nope. He's alive. Just slowly but surely, he life steals up using his vampire fangs. He's saving his magic wand. Uh, they're losing vision of him sometimes because he was able to deward the ward. Uh, Quap has to blink away. He uses the wand at the very last second, and he was able to, sur to survive for 20 seconds in TP away. 20 seconds on a high ground with five heroes surrounding him, and they were not able, a professional team was not able to kill a Bristleback. So, like I said, that clip that I just showed you was obviously more of a meme. I thought it was really funny. I wanted to put that in a video. But this one is way less of a meme. This is infamous, exact same game, of course, reacting to this Bristleback and in such a devastating, depressing way, uh, Bristleback loses this game, which, like I said, he was popping off. He was completely controlling this game, even up until this point. It's just that Bristle doesn't do anything if you ignore him. So watch this. They just go straight past the Bristle. They go for the Pugna. He dies. And what can Bristle do about it? I mean, he can Lotus his Pugna. Sure, that'll help. He'll throw his Heaven's Halibur. He's trying. He's trying to do something. But what can he do? They just walk past. They go thrown. They they just hit thrown and ignore him. And then they jump past. They go for the Skywrath Mage. He dies. Still, this entire time, Bristleback, he's just getting kited, he's getting disarmed, he's getting disarmed by the Heaven Solibird, by the Oracle, he's trying to kill the Healing Ward, he's getting decrepified. They tip him. He is he is so easily kited by this team, in, in that he doesn't do enough damage to warrant killing him, that they're able to tip him while throwing him after he popped off in this game while kiting him. In my opinion, this is just a really good example of exactly how you should play around this hero. Use your spells on him to kite him, not to kill him. The final hero that I want to take a look at is a very annoying hero and currently a very broken hero. So uh, these other heroes that I talked about, I actually think they're quite bad in terms of people overrate how good they are. Uh, with Lycan, I think not so much. I, I think the hero is quite fantastic right now. But with that being said, it's so good that it, it feels wrong not talking about how to counter it in a video like this. Uh, I think Lycan is the highest win rate hero by a pretty big margin in uh, in pro level pubs right now, at least with a large enough sample size. It's it's pretty you know ubiquitous that this hero is kind of broken. So how exactly do we deal with Lycan? Well, first let's take a look at what happens when this hero gets a simple Necro 1 and pops his ultimate in a team fight. He completely destroys. It feels like he does infinite damage, and if you disable him, his units 
just kill you. He's even able to trade with a Monkey King in a Monkey King ult, which is completely insane. So very strong hero. Uh, my first recommendation on how to deal with the Lycan is without a doubt to pick heroes that can clear his units, pick heroes that can deal with his units. Kunkka, uh, Earthshaker, these are some pretty good examples. Monkey King is definitely not bad. Like I really think this dire draft here is quite good against a Lycan, but what they do next after this fight is much better against Lycan, and it's something that is incredibly achievable in every single game, no matter what your draft is. The fact is, this hero is broken, but he's got a 125 second cooldown ultimate. People don't even go boots on him. He is completely useless without this ultimate. So basically what you need to do is you need to hunt him and you need to be extremely active around uh, him not having his ultimate. So we can see in this situation, he cannot do a single thing when the Radiant goes on him, they don't even need to use spells. Like they don't need to use stuns. They don't need to they don't need grip. They don't need anything. Because just an orb of venom slow is enough to kill a bootsless lycan who doesn't have his ultimate. And that is exactly how you deal with this hero. You basically just fight around his ultimate. You get crimson guards so that his units don't do as much damage. You get armor. You try to draft heroes that can kill his units. But really the most important thing, like I said, that's achievable in every game no matter what, is to fight around the fact that he's got a two-minute cooldown ultimate that he absolutely needs to fight with. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And before we go, I have a question for you and I want you to answer truthfully. Be honest. Not with me. Be honest with yourself. Did you know people are doing online yoga these days? Online yoga. How does that even work? Okay. I didn't know this until my stepmom told me that she's paying 50 bucks a month to do online yoga with people, with a, with a teacher. And my first thought was, I'm in the wrong business. What, am, what the heck am I doing streaming video games? And my second thought is, well, this could definitely work for Dota. This could work for video games. So when Pro Guides contacted me and they said, hey, do you want to teach online classes in you know, video games? And I thought, that's a great idea. I already thought that was a great idea. So, you know, absolutely. Sign me up. Uh, so shout outs to Pro Guides. Shout outs to them for sponsoring this video and sponsoring me. They uh, they also have some you know guides on there. They have live coaching. Uh, they're moving into Dota, which thank goodness it's very good for the scene. But most importantly, I'm on there. I'm on Pro Guides. Uh, I stream every Tuesday, every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to do some live Dota classes with me and maybe yoga, then check me out on there. Anyway. That's it for this video. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.